Welcome to the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. We're here again with Cody Nelson, the optics manager of GoHunt.com Gear Shop. Gear, GoHunt.com is the title sponsor of the J. Scott Outdoors podcast. Cody, the glassing guru, it's nice to have you again. Nice to be here. It's always nice to be here. We're going to continue to dive into some of these questions. The listeners get so much value out of uh, you know being able to ask questions and get answers. So let's just dive right into it. On Instagram, Jack underscore Sun fourteen, he asks Swaro fifteens and a ninety five BTX or Swaro fifteens and a variable zoom spotter. So from this. Is it wrong to say all? <laughs> yeah. All of the above. All From the, the sounds above? of it, the Swirl 15s, he's dead set on the Swirl 15s, but he's trying to decide if a 95 BTX or a variable zoom spotter. Again, Oof. like we've talked, um, you know, you probably need more information to give a, you know, probably the best answer for that person. You could give your opinion on the subject but my but you need to know what, right and you need to know what are you using it for most um in order to do that but well the it, dilemma that he's in is he's he's obviously picked the swirl 15s as his primary binocular that he wants to glass through but then he's having a hard time with the 95 btx it yeah. sounds like with the with the double eyes you know with with a fixed zoom and then he's thinking that there's an, a need for possibly a variable he, zoom he's not going down scale. the wrong road right. at all right um wow you know because you and i both talked about the btx big eyes and that whole solution um i guess the thing that i would ask first is you know can you look through spotting scopes and, I, and I, I think what needs to be said about that real quick is, is that, look, I don't care whether you choose, you know, angled or straight. We, we, we'll, we'll cover that again, and, and, and that, that question will continually come up, and there's nothing wrong. Whatever you choose, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I have people that literally will call and go, I hate spotting scopes. I've tried looking through spotting scopes, and they can't do it. I'm not wearing a patch. I'm not, you know, they yeah. start going through the whole thing. Okay. Well, if that's your answer, then you got to go BTX. Right. But if, if, if you're willing to put the time in and I say, I, I don't, you know, I guess you could call it practice, but to me, it's like lifting weights. If you're, if you're li- literally willing to exercise your eye behind a spotting scope for any length of time, it's one of the most valuable tools that we have out there, especially if you're going 95 because it, you go from 30 to 70, and we've talked about how valuable that is over 50 power. Right. It's the most valuable tool in spotting scopes over 50 power of anything that's out there, and I'm not going to give you the answers to what I'm – because I think there's a question coming up about another product, and we'll talk about that. Yeah, because we do have another question on but that. But my, my, you know, my point being is is that, man, I mean, that's it, – it's it's tough. Um, I, I, if I, I would – If ahead. I had to choose one, I mean, if you're just asking me and I had to choose one, I'd go spotting scope, and I'm going to tell you because – what I do with the BTX in scouting is not the same as what I do with a, a spotting scope and when, when we're actually looking at animals and trying to figure out how to kill them. Right. Th- and that, that's, that's a- one thing I was going to go into with the BTX. The BTX is great for long-range glassing. Um, you've got a lightweight setup compared to, you know, the Koas, the Doctor, some of the other, you, you know, some of the other long-range options. Um, and it's great, you know, a BTX is great for a guy that's going to coos deer hunt or sheep hunt or even, you know, you know, Western state mule deer hunt, right. you know, and, you know, Nevada or something, be looking long ranges where you're going to be glassing long periods of time. A BTX is phenomenal. Um, you know, if, if you're, from my perspective, if you've already decided on the 15 Swaros, I would probably go with a great spotting scope like mm-hmm. a 95 or an 85 millimeter Swaro. I agree. Maybe even that new Zeiss. Um, but at that point, then you're using the spotting scope to, you glass a buck up, you switch to the spotting scope and decide, is that a buck that I should go after or not? Whereas with the BTX, 
you're using that all day and that's what you basically use and you can at long ranges usually determine with 30 power 35 if 35, you're using the 95 right. um you know at, at first glance you can be like that's a buck that i need to either get a closer look at or i can tell right away because now you've got 20 more power than your 15s you can already say that's not even a buck I want to go after. Right. The fine line is where when that distance becomes far enough that you need that extra more than 35 power. Right. You know, into the 50, 60, 70 power range of, say, the Swarovski 95, 95 um, STX or ATX, where now you're able to extend you know, where you're at 35 power, now you're at 70 power and you can go, okay, that buck's not what we want. Right. Um, but I feel like it's kind of a double-edged sword because with the BTX, a lot of times looking through both eyes comfortably, even at 35 power, you're like, yeah, I see enough yeah, of it. Exactly. That, so it's, you know. I, I, I think that, you know, to, to, if you were just going to answer the question, as clearly and as concise and short as possible, I think you have to ask yourself, do you want both eyes open or do you not? I, think- I, 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 because, you know, and then, you know, the, 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 the piece that, that, you know, he's not mentioning there is, well, you can do the 1.7 extender. Um, and I've used that product. I like that product. Um, up to a certain point, I think it's got a lot of use. Um, because, you know, especially on the, you know, I mean, I take that to 50 power or 70 power, whatnot, pretty quick. And, and I think that there's, there's a, uh, uh, I mean, there's certainly a, uh, a need for that and being able to, to up your game a little bit and you're saving some weight and space and I get it. Um, but I think to get, you know, really in depth again about, the whole system that Swarovski's putting together there, it's the most versatile thing on the planet. I mean, it, it's it's the best glassing system on the planet. I'm not trying to eke anybody else out, but ha- I mean, you've got so much at your fingertips with that. So, yeah. in, you know, in, 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 inevitably, even if I have the spotting scope, at some point, you're, Especially just for a, a scouting tool, yeah, you're gonna get the BTX. The BTX is gonna wind up in your yeah in your bag of tricks. I, I, I it can't right. not. If you have the 95 objective, you might as well buy the BTX eyepiece. Yeah, because even if I'm just gonna use it for scouting, but it, you sell optics. Well, I do. <laughs> I do. I know a guy. But that's the thing is, is that that that, that you know that long range glassing. I think that that's the product that changes. And it's literally like flip flopped how people are scouting. Oh yeah, and I think the success is going up dramatically. I think people are getting better. And I mean, when the 15s came out, you know, that was long range glassing. And now with the Koas, with the BTX, with the Doctors, with the Twin Spotters, I mean, it's gone to a whole no- another I, I, level. I have to. I, there's actually a. I actually had a guy tell me the other day, uh, a friend of ours, and said, "Hey, do you two have to tell him everything?" <laughs> Do you the have to tell him the everything? Yes. Yeah, the, the answer is yes. Okay, let's go to the next question. Swaro 95 versus the Zeiss Harpia. Ooh. Now, I haven't had a chance to look at the Zeiss Harpia, but I've heard a lot of really good things. We kind of touched on it on another podcast episode. And then he goes on to say uh, pan head versus fluid head for big glass. So let's first answer the Swaro 95 versus the Zeiss Harpia. Well, tell me what you know about the Zeiss Harpia and it, it, what Look, I've looked through the Harpia. I've I mean and 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 I'm going to be flat out honest and I've compared them at the shop. I have not had them on a full blown I'm I'm actually looking to try to do that this December. I have not done a full blown comparison looking at game in field conditions in the, you know, on tripods and, and, and looking at game at, you know, X number of distances. So, so from what um, I'm hearing though, Zeiss has, they've stepped it up. No, they've, they've stepped it up for sure. Yeah. That, that, that's a, that's a 
that's something to be looking at. So your verdict is still out. Until um, it, you can... It's it. I mean, it's still out. You know, is it going to replace my ninety-five? You know, Swaro right now. I, I I'm not going to tell you yes because I haven't had. It's not fair for me to say that, but I like what they did and and what I've seen so far. Um, they've got some pretty unique characteristics about the zoom and what it does to the image and the focusing. So I'm the, you know, the jury's out, but I'm really excited about that product. Are you thinking that it could get a little bit more fine tuned, uh, focus? Um, I don't know that it's, well, yeah. Um, it, it, it mainly has to do with, um, the, the focusing at length. And refocusing, mm-hmm. or I, maybe I should say the of not having to refocus. Mm-hmm. So, um, and and I think that they've, uh, and it, it all has to do with the construction of it and where things, you know, in what order they are in terms of the internals. So um, I'll be able to really kind of put that in better words, hopefully at the end of the month. Good. Uh, pan head versus fluid head for big glass. Now, before before you go into pan head versus fluid head, explain the difference. Well, I mean, there's a true pan head actually has uses fluid in it. So they're kind of the same. Well, yeah, and they're but one of them a true fluid head would would have technically would technically be be smoother. And and its adjustments would be more fine, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, but a pan, I, I mean, I, I would always go with the fluid head. For the big glass, uh, you know, we're talking Koa, we're talking Doctor, we're talking BTX, we're talking Twins. Twin Spotters, we're talking, you know. What head out there is one that you like? And while we're at it, it's not part of this question, but what head are you liking for that? Granted, if you're like me on the big glass, you want to have a pretty heavy duty head. You're going to mm-hmm. sacrifice weight where you're, you know, you're willing to carry more weight for that stability of, you know, when you start getting heavier glass, you need that stable platform. T- typically speaking, and look, I'm still a big proponent of the Manfrotto 502. You know, with that that center neck tension, because that I I think that changed the the big glass um, heads, if you will, uh, when when you could really get that tension, you know, in there. Um, so the five hundred two is still the my my only knock on the five hundred two is is that it's a really big head, and to, you know, for packs and it just it's a little bit of an annoyance. Um, you know, you, 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 I, I know the 500, um, the, the MBH 500 is, is a solid head. Um, a lot of people like that side mount on it because there's that little flip lever. Um, that's a, certainly a good head and something I'd look at. Um, I, I've been, you know, I'm going to say it, and I'm not trying to oversell it because I just don't think it has to sell itself, that the V, you know, the, the Subaru VA5 um, is such a strong little head that I've actually been getting pictures um, from Outfitters, Jay, that we know that are using their COAs on it. And I am i don't know that it would be the perfect for a set of COAs, but it does pretty darn good. Um, and you and I have talked about the old 701 H, you know, HDVs. Mm-hmm. Um, that, you could use a COA on that. And... I Why'd think they this, discontinue that head? That was a phenomenal head, in, in my opinion. I, Used the big plate and I, one I, of the best, one of the best heads they've ever made, and they discontinued it. Well, and I think you know after, if you remember our conversation that we were talking about the other day, I I mentioned that um, Manfrotto and Bogan used to be owned by separate families, and they were together. Um, my understanding is is that those companies have been sold. And you ha- now have different people running them. And a lot of the changes that they started to make were not, you know, the old, stu- you know, the old school thinking. Um, there's been a lot of changes that they've made that I haven't been exactly pleased with. They've, they've come out with some really good products. But getting rid of that 701, man, that was just, 
I'm fortunate. I I have one that well, basically I, is brand new. Yeah, I have a dang near brand new one outside too. And I, yeah. I mean, and I, man, that's hard. And you know, you'll have to, you know, probably take my VH, whatever, and use it for a while. But, whew, it, I, I, I can't find anything you know that I like to use better right now. Yeah. Um, it's been kind of, kind of my go-to, and I think it 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 runs the course along a, a wide variety of of optics. You know, from lightweight to heavyweight. And he's talking about the Swaro 95 and the Zeiss Harpia. So he's talking about big glass, meaning mm-hmm. a big spotting scope. And you talked about balance before. Um, but certainly when you start getting into the 95 objectives of both of those, and I'm not sure if the Harpia goes quite to 95, but what you know, it, it's big. Um, you definitely want to have stability. You want to have a head that you know can hold that and balance that correct yeah, absolutely well yeah i mean that's the 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 panning motion is typically going to be pretty easy to to regulate it's the tilt but it's the tilt that always gets everybody and and i've just found that this va5 and you know like the old 70 hv and 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 you know but the 502 and the the 500s and, and even the x pros and those they just have enough tension on them that you can, you know, you can get them to, you know, I want to use the word free float, but, you know, there's, you just, feather. yeah, just feather it in and, and yeah. get it to where the weight's real balanced. And, and, and what I'm looking for is, is that, you know, I typically sit on a stool and then, you know, I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm, I, I typically don't use the handles. I kind of use the optic because, you know, like on the co is it's that heavy. Um, I'm looking for an, when you do that, I'm looking for something that you're able to move it where you want it. And if I let my hands off, it doesn't move. Right. Now, if I want to lock it down, I lock it down. But if, if I'm just looking and I just want to kind of make sure that I'm not touching it, my legs, my arms, and there's nothing on it. I just want as clear and as clean a look as I can. Um, that's what I want that head to do. Right. I, I want it to stop when I need it to stop. Right. And I don't want to have to touch it or hold it to, right. to keep it in place. Yep. Let's go to the next question. On what would you invest more of your money on optics, binos or a spotter and why? This comes from the, SD. That's easy. SD period Lorax. That's it. To me, it's the 85%. It, it's, and we've talked about this at length and, and Jay, you can add what you want, but you should be looking through your binos 85% of the time, if not more. Correct. And so you're saying I, spend more of your I, money I on would, a great bino than a spotter. Because that you, question comes up a lot with chest binoculars and 15s. Well, if I'm carrying 10s, 15s, and a spotter, I'm going to use those 15s. At least eighty five percent of the time, right? Because you're going to a high point to glass, right? And 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 people would say, well, you know, do I have to have ELs for the chest, or and and they'll tell me, oh, I have a set of you know, Vortex razors or something, or Vipers or whatever. I'm like, great, knock yourself out, use them, keep them on your chest, look at what you need to look at as you're moving into your spot or doing whatever you're doing, because the the whole if if you see something with your eyes and you're going to check it out and confirm it. You're going to stay in play, which you're going to pull your, you know, tripod out, and you're going to put your 15s on it, and you're really going to look at it. Right. So I, I would just almost always rather have my my money into my binoculars, rather, no matter yeah. what you're mounting, I'd rather have my money into my binoculars, and then yeah, save because you got to find it first. Got to Spot, find it first. Spotters used to really define and, <clears throat> and evaluate, you know, but you got to find that buck or that ram or that bull first. Right. And even in that case, if you had to choose, you're not going to sit there and glass around with one eye with a spotter. You so, I, I agree that's an easy you know go with the go well, with the great binos. If you can only afford one, go with a great pair of binos and you should be great. Let's yep. go to the next question. Uh, uh, Colden underscore Mercer, uh, Preston Mercer's kid, great great golfer, <laughs> um, great great family. Uh, difference in range finders between different optics and how to find slope change and angle. So it sounds like he's talking about some of the angle compensation, range finders and stuff, the differences. You've got a wide variety oh, of, man. of range finders out al- there. Almost all of them do it. Um, 
it's almost a rarity to find one that doesn't do angle now. Um, well, I mean, you got range finding binoculars. You've you got, got you've got, you got compact yeah, range compact. finders. Um, you know, it, it, I think if you're, and, and I'm not sure exactly where I'm going with this, but you know, for me personally, if I'm a bow hunter, I really I kind of lean towards the compacts. If I'm if I'm a, a, a rifle hunter, I start leaning towards the the uh, the, the binoculars. Um, all of them have angle compensation um, capabilities. Um, there are a few binoculars that, um, you know, like some of the Leicas will go down to 10 yards and out to 800 yards, you know, with the, the angle compensation. Um, you know, a lot of people want to know why, th- because of the angle compensation at 10 yards, why they stop at 800 and because of the way they do the calculations, they have to keep the um, the margin of error to a minimum. And so when they tell you that they're going to 800, they're typically saying that, you know, it's going to be within a yard or a yard and a half at that distance. So um, as to where if it's at 10 yards, they're going to be right on. So... Um, you know, there's, uh, man, there's, well, let me ask you a question. There's a whole range of affordable range oh, finders. Oh. You can go from fairly affordable all the way up to pretty pricey. Um, and you get different levels of quality. Uh, but you guys at go hunt at the gear shop, go hunt.com gear shop. You guys carry a wide range of, yeah, we, of range finders. We correct? do loophole. We do, um, the Leica, we do the, uh, the, the vortex, and and just in those brands alone, how things have changed, you know, almost everybody does a thousand yard or, you know, now seems to be 1300 yard. Right. You um, do the Zeiss and Swarovski as well, right? Uh, well, yeah, but I'm talking about the compacts okay. and then the binoculars, you do the Leica, the Zeiss, and then the Furies. And, and that's the thing is, is it, it's, um, you know, it, 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 you know, I, I, this is kind of making me have ideas about how I want to feature some of this stuff, but, um, it, it's, there's such a variety now of what we, we didn't have those choices, right? 10 years. Ten years I mean, you just pretty much like here, here's a geovid, you know, range finder in your binocular, or you had, you know, like my first range finder that, that, um, it was a, uh, it was a Nikon 600 and it didn't even do. It didn't even do angle. Yeah. And then they came out with the Nikon 1000 and it did, um, <laughs> it, it did the angle. So, yeah, um, you start talking about true distance and then you start talking about a- adding angle compensation. I mean, absolutely. it's just made everybody better because you could have, you know, a 350 yards shot distance, but it's at a different angle. It, it throws that number dramatically. Well, so it's amazing how technology has changed our ability as hunters to be better. The first year that I got that Ranger 1000, if I didn't have that, man, I, I, it was an awful deal because I, where I was shooting from and where that animal was, it was, if I, it was like 407 line of sight and the corrected, <laughs> the corrected distance was 368. Yeah. I mean, that makes it, it so, I mean, it, and it was, I mean, it was shooting straight downhill so yeah i hope i've answered that question but um th- those are questions that i think need to be talked about so that i can find out exactly what a guy's needs are and what he's trying to do got another question here texas panhandle says other than gain elevation what tips do you have for glassing flat tall grass prairie you know obviously you talk about the elevation you know use contour lines you know, if, if you can't gain elevation, you know, use ridge lines, use any bit of elevation going back to it that you can to look down and across. Right. Um, well, I think it's a big deal. Um, you know, in those kind of situations, you know, and I've had the, the fortune of, of, of hunting, you know, f- kind of from Amarillo to, you know, up into Liberal and in that southwestern Kansas and those whitetail bucks 
I, I don't care who. I, I mean, and I and I am no expert at, and I've only learned from guys that have been living there for, you know, sixteen, seventy years, and and I think it really pays to know. And what you're talking about, Jay, is is that if you can find any depression, and 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 really try to use Google, and try to understand if you can get to one point and it gives you just a little bit in into where 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 those bucks hold up during the wind or getting out of the sun, or, you know, I mean, whatever they're trying to do, um, I, 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 you just got to put yourself in those angles yeah. to where you can look into stuff. I mean, a lot of guys that are antelope hunters, you know, they'll get up on, they'll have a platform on the bed of their truck or they'll have something on top where they can get as high oh, as yeah. they can, to, yep. you know, glass out into those flats. Um, but it's all about finding just those little rises of contour because, you know, you've got to, if, if it's flat, you can only see so far. So you've got to get up where you can see a, a, at a little bit higher angle, it gives you a, a further distance that you can well, see. Well, and, and the other thing is, is that I would, um, you know, again, distance is a factor. And so the power of binocular that you end up using, obviously, would maybe be different with the different distances. But... What I would say this, it when you start looking into grass, and I don't care if you're hunting coos deer or whitetail back, it doesn't matter. You you have to slow down, right? Because if the wind is just even slightly, you're looking at it now. You're looking for the tip of an. You're literally looking for the tip of an antler, or something to change, and give you you know. Um, an idea that that you know that that animal's there, so I, I it comes back to uh, uh, super bright glass, um, glass that you can kind of look into the shadows and look through brush to the best of your ability, and 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 tripod up and slow down. I I, I that's yeah. you know one of the best ways I can think to do that. Another question from. Uh... New Mexico bow hunter 727. He says, wide angle or not when choosing a swirl spotter. Um, I love that 25 to 50 wide angle mm -hmm. eyepiece. I'm using that in my twin spotter uh, set up with the 65 <clears throat> millimeter. Um, but even as just on a spotter, I like that 25 to 50 wide angle eyepiece. Um, but obviously in my 95, it's a 30 to 70. I'm curious your thoughts on that. You know, I think if you look at the the numbers and i and i i'm pretty sure that he's referring to the 25 to 50 versus the 20 to 60 right so i kind of look at it this way if i'm going with the 20 to 50 or, or I, to 50. I, I, what i should say is if i'm going to the the 65 millimeter i'm almost in, i'm gonna use the 25 to 50 and and the reason being is is because if I, if I if I my stats are correct, that twenty five power has almost or if not oh, as wide a field of view as the twenty power does in a lower power. So if I can get twenty five, if I can get five more power and I have the same relatively the same field of view, I think I've gained. Mm -hmm. um, I I like the fifty at the at the top end because. On a 65 power spotting scope, I'm probably never going to use 60 anyway because the exit pupil becomes so small that I like how that 50 power looks through the 65. So if I was going to buy the 80, maybe the, you know, if someone's looking at cost difference and, you know, because the, the 20 to 20, 25 to 50 is a more expensive by about 300 bucks. And you're going to pay more money for the, the, the 80 millimeter. So if you're doing that, I can see a reason why a guy would just simply go with the 20 to 60 by 80. Um, of which, by the way, that's kind of the spotting scope that all other spotting scopes were kind of designed. Were, were kind of, were, I mean, that's what everybody was shooting to beat and everybody right. was trying to, that was, that's what everything was measured by. Um, and, 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 you know, when you turn it up to 40, 50, you know, 60, um, you can still get a pretty decent picture. It's not as good as the 95 and the 70, but you know, it's, uh, it, it's something to be, you know, to think about anyway. I, I like the 25 to 50 in a, in a, uh, in a 65. And then on the 80, I like the, the 20 to sixties. Dawn to dusk production says, 
on a budget, two pieces of glass you would recommend? I assume he's talking binocular, but it's two pieces of glass you'd recommend on a budget. And and I would say, well, what budget? Well, but I assume yeah, he's no, talking about uh, trying uh, to no, save as much money trying as he to save can as much and get money. the most value that he can. Um, you know, I I think if, if and I'd say give two or three or four. If well, that, that's that's what I was gonna. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking, you know, the 1042s. Um, SLC. The, yeah, I'm thinking that the the you go Swarovski 1042 SLCs. You go. Um, uh, uh, Conquest HD 1042s, you know, um, it, it, the 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 Vortex 10 to 42 razors, um, you know, I mean, you know, the the um, you can even throw the, the Leica Trinibid, you know, that they they have a Trinibid that's in that thousand dollar range that that's an awesome piece of glass. Um, if you're in a five hundred dollar range, um, you know, look real strongly at the the Viper HDs. Um, that's a real good piece of glass. Um, Loophole does the, um, you know, their, uh, um, what is it, uh, BX4s and BX5s. That's something to look at now. Um, and, I, and I'm and i assuming that he's talking about, you know, like a binocular and a spotting scope. Or, and um, again, you know, the, the on the lowest end, the, the Viper HDs, and then you move into the, the Gavias, uh, which is uh, the, the Zeiss Gavias. Um, their spotting scope, uh, their, it's kind of their new mid range spotting scope. Um, and the, the vortex razors, um, real strong. So, uh, I mean, there's, there's quite a bit of options to choose from in there. Um, and just remember upgrading glass is better than not. So, you know, even if you're making small increments it's better than, than, you know, than not making any increments at all. And these are the these are exact questions that you want guys to call and talk yeah. to you about, and you want to be able to go through each one with them, yep. talking about where they live, where they hunt primarily, yep. what they're using them for, and you know what their budget is, you know, and if they think they're going to be upgrading in a year or two, you know, how long are they going to be using them, that type of stuff. That's yeah, the, what you. The the best way that I can help you stay in a budget and spend your money is if I fully understand what your what your what your your needs are. Sure. Uh, we've got Kevin M. 2047. He says, you talk about what's the best binoculars and spotting scopes a lot, but what about rifle scopes? Well, rifle scopes is, uh, that's a, it's a deep subject. Um, and, and it's, everything still applies. The, all the same companies that we're talking about, um, they're all good, you know, reputable companies. Um, you know, the things that people start to get questions about now and what's most important to them um, is, you know, because we're, we're ranging and we're, we're using the dial to, to, you know, come up and, you know, we're using MOAs or quarter inch clicks or, you know, whatever it is. Um, so you'll get questions about, well, how good are the, you know, is the, 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 the system, you know, how, uh, you know, is it reliable? Does it hit the same spot every time? Um, and I'm going to tell you that, that, you know, for the most part, um, most scopes that we're talking about today, they absolutely do what we say they're, you know, you know, and what the companies say they're going to do. Um, I was not a big believer in, in, you know, that kind of thought process for a lot of my, you know, younger years in hunting. And, you know, the more I got along, um, the more I wanted to shoot a little farther, I am not a, um, I mean, I've done it and I like it and it's fun to shoot stuff, you know, especially the metal targets, you know, out of the thousand and, and beyond. I, I, it's, it's crazy to think the distances we can do that stuff at, you know, but I'm a six or 700 yard shooter, you know, for, for game. And I like to be really proficient at that. Um, and it's the same reason with a bow. I'm a 50 yard shooter. I, I like shooting at, at certain distances and, and the discipline is whether I'm going to go beyond that distance or not. But it, it, as it, as it, as it applies to the rifle scopes, um, I think putting your money into the best scopes that you can afford, um, and having a, a rifle and that is mounted correctly and on a gun that will that will you know shoot at you know one inch or better average is what I would be looking for. 
Um, but I think that the scope has to be the most repeatable part of that. Most rifles today will shoot pretty decent with all the different factory loads that we have. Um, you've got to put your money into a scope. And that scope, <clears throat> the options that we have today are a thousandfold to what we had 20 and 30 years ago. You know, you have um, scopes now that have eight times the power range, you know, so, um, you know, a 2.3 to an 18. I mean, we didn't, we just didn't have that stuff available to us back then. Um, you know, the, the long range game has changed a lot about how we look at scopes. I mean, I haven't sold a, you know, like a regular three benign, you know, like loophole rifle scope in, in a very long time. And there's just, people just don't use them. I mean, there, there are people that do, but the majority, it, don't. The, ma the majority is this, you know, they, they want like the minimum scope now is like a four to 12. I mean, you know, typically power on that other end is at least 12 power. Um, very few, uh, tens, but, um, yeah, I, I, you know, maybe we ought to do a, a podcast where we just do one, like scopes for that whole Go time. And, the rifle and scopes. yeah, because yeah. it's, um, reticles are incredibly in individual. Um, you know, there's first focal plane, second focal plane, there's all kinds of different shooting systems. And maybe we need to go through that with people and give them that kind of an insight to that because, um, that we, we, I get those questions every day and we answer them and, you know, and, and we do what we have to do to, you know, to, to get them into what works for them. Sure. So Cody, I appreciate your time. We're going to dive into some of the other questions on another episode. I want to thank the sponsors of this podcast. I want to thank GoHunt.com, uh, the, the, gear shop and that's cody's the optics manager of that gear shop the glassing guru uh, you can reach cody directly at 702-847-8747 extension 2 uh, or you can email him at optics at gohunt.com and cody uh, one thing i didn't point out in the other podcast episode is you've promised me and you have already been taking care of the oh, j yeah. scott outdoors listeners Yep. And if they call and mention my name, uh, you're going to take care of those people, and I yeah, appreciate that. Absolutely. I also want it's to thank pleasure. I want to thank Go Hunt for their sponsorship of the podcast. I want to thank Kuyu. That's K U I U dot com. Kuyu Ultralight Hunting. I want to thank CanyonCoolers dot com. If you use the J Scott promo code, you're going to get a 10 percent discount on all orders. Phonescope.com. If you use the J Scott 18 promo code, you're going to get a 10 percent discount. Uh, I use phone scope. If you look at my Instagram, a lot of those videos, most all of those videos are shot through a phone scope. Uh, and then onxmaps.com. If you use the JScott 18 promo code, uh, you're going to get a 20% discount. I've been using Onyx on, I just used it on the sheep hunt, trying to figure out how to get up there and kill that sheep from point to point. You can measure line distance. And, you know, I used it a bunch trying to get in there and figure out how to get that ram killed. Uh, but thank you for coming on. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for sharing your knowledge. Uh, Love doing it. I want to encourage the listeners to reach out to Cody. Again, he can be reached at 702-847-8747. That's extension 2. <laughs> or send him an email at optics at gohunt.com. Guys, thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Jay.